How often do you make your own puff pastry, Cass, as a professional? Not very often. Neither. <laughs> I'm Alice Aslavsky. Welcome to this ASCO steam oven cook-along. I've got Cass with me from ASCO and yes. she's going to talk me through the features of the ASCO steam oven because the whole point of this is to help you fall back in love with your steam oven. So Cass, exactly. what is it that you love about the steam oven? What Combi Steam is, it introduces a little bit of steam when you're using um, a hot air function. Mm. And what that's great for is things like pastries, breads, Especially pastry, you can actually see all the layers of pastry separate just with introducing a little bit of steam. Breads are going to have a beautiful crispy top um, and beautiful and soft in the middle. Terrific. Well, That's amazing. that was to give you a chance to get your ingredients together. If you haven't yet done it, now is the time. We're making pizza scrolls. So get together all the ingredients that you love and that your kids love because this recipe is fantastic for the whole family. Exactly. Yeah, get the kids involved. Totally. Definitely. We're yep. going to make two pizza scroll sets today. Yes. One veggio, one with a little bit of meat. Mm -hmm. um, the meats we've chosen are a bit of prosciutto yep. and some and, salami. Yes, correct. Delish. Uh, and all of the veg. So there's a really great selection of things like mushroom, zucchini, capsicum, uh, sweet potato and eggplant. But again, you do you. And delicious optional extras like olives, sun-dried tomatoes, pesto, tomato paste, my favourite little addition, tumami, mm -hmm. if you can find yourself some. Uh, Cass, you get to taste the tumami one today. Yeah, I'm going to pop Thank that you. on the veggio. Exciting. Uh, really exciting. So let's get straight into it before your puff pastry melts. So Excellent. <laughs> so, yes. um, do we, we, should we start maybe doing the passata? Yeah. Why not? Yes, okay. <laughs> okay so um, passata is a really good base for any kind of pizza situation. And because we're using puff pastry, what that means is that you get a really great, you know what, Cass, mm. why don't we do two at the same time? I was just going to say yeah. that. I was yeah. just going to suggest the same thing. So I'm going to do passata, which means you get to do tamami. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Um, and tamami is my uh, gift to the world. Sorry. It's a black garlic. You can use this one if you want oh, to. There you go. Perfect. Um, so just swish it on with a bit of a mini spatch. Yep. Um, and it's a black garlic and tomato paste combo. And if you do use the tamami at home, it's going to go a little bit darker when it bakes. So just be prepared for that. Uh, now, passata. Smells amazing. Swoosh. Thanks. What are you doing, Alice? Are you going to do the vegetarian or I'll do the vegetarian? You do the veggio because yep. I think that's going to add a bit more of that umami savoury oh, beautiful flavour. If you're doing this by yourself, we're going to go nice and slow so that you can make your two. Uh, but I would recommend if you've got little hands at home that you get them on board to decorate their own. Kids would just have so much fun with this. Totally. Yep. Love it. Okay. And then you want to leave a bit of a lip at the end, uh, at the edge, so that when you roll, you've got somewhere to kind of squish. Okay. Exactly. And then we're going to decorate. Now, there's a very important reason why I've got Cass here, because I have not cooked much with steam, but when you're working with pastry, it is obviously really important to have, um, not just important, but handy, advantageous, to have some steam function functionality. Correct. So we should yep. probably preheat the oven, is that right? Yes. So preheat your oven. To preheat your oven. What temp? Uh, 220 degrees. Yeah. That's hot. Um, yes. That's unusually hot. So does that mean that the steam uh, stabilises the pastry so that you can take it higher and get a crispier finish? Yes, correct. Yes. That is good. That yep. is good. Okay. So let's get some let's accoutrement do on our pizza scrolls. And these are really good for lunch boxes. Mm -hmm. So uh, lunch boxes, working lunches, remote learning lunches, <laughs> <laughs> lockdown lunches. Lock also very good to freeze. Yes. So you could bake these and then freeze them. Yep, correct. And even using gluten-free um, pastry as well, we could make it gluten-free. You could make your own pastry. Yes. If you dare. How often do you make your own puff pastry, Cass, as a professional? Not very often. Neither. <laughs> what about you? No way. <laughs> There's some really great store-bought puff pastry that you can buy from the freezer section. Just look at the ingredients and find the ones that have the least amount of ingredients and the stuff that you'd usually put into the food processor. So it should be yeah. like flour, water, butter, Yeah. you know, maybe egg, but maybe not. And spelt. I also really like the spelt puff pastry. Oh, yes, that's beautiful. Isn't the it creme. Good? Yes. Yes, I love creme's my favourite. Mine too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so uh, we've got that. 
I think particularly if you are going a meat option, it's nice to cut through with something like olives. Uh, you can use capers. You can, you can even pop cornichons onto this if you want to be a little bit fancy. Ooh, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. And I've just got my beautiful grilled eggplant here as well. Yours is looking very nice, Cass. It's nice and full. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Um, I might go some green olives as well on mine. Why not? What are you putting on your pizza mm. scrolls? <laughs> <laughs> that felt very play school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you know, one tip, even if you buy store-bought olives and they tell you they're pitted, I'd highly recommend, especially if you've got kids that you do check them, split them, check them because that's a, it's going to be a trip to the dentist. Mm. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, and I might just go a little bit more cheese. Bit of sun-dried tomato on mine. Now, Cass, yes. while we are stalling, pottering, tell me more about how you can cook vegetables in mm. a steam oven. The benefits of cooking your vegetables in a steam oven rather than doing them on your cooktop is that they are going to retain all the vitamins, minerals, nutrients. Uh, we will do a little demo as well with some um, broccolini and asparagus and just to show the viewers uh, how amazing they, the vibrancy of colour is as well yeah. and the crunchiness and the texture of the um, of the vegetables. Yeah, and you mentioned um, veg losing nutrients when you're boiling them in a pot. The reason why is because the water sucks all of that goodness out. So if you are steaming, yeah. you're retaining all of that inside. So yeah. that's really good. And I remember back in the day, you know, when your mum used to make your um, vegetables, they'd be boiling it on the pot. You'd tip all that beautiful green water down the sink. <laughs> yes. And that's all your beautiful vitamins and minerals. Yeah, and flavour as well. Exactly. So I'm going to just add a few bonus salami slices. Why not? This is a supreme pizza scroll. Ultimately, a pizza scroll is not a pizza scroll unless there's some cheese involved. Lots Again, of cheese. If you want to make yours fully plant-based, you can get plant-based, gluten-free pastry and use a plant-based melty cheese. There's some really good ones out there. So. And I prefer to grate my own cheese as well because yeah. I find that pre-grated cheese can be a little bit watery. Yes, and yeah. they, have, they tend to have like anti-caking agents in there as Correct. well. Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay, so these are going to go back into the fridge just to set a little bit and make it easier to roll. Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to send you off Thank as the, you. the sentry to do that. <laughs> How are you going with your pizza scrolls? I hope everything is on yours. Let us know as well what you chose to pop on your pizza scrolls. Now is the time. You'll note I haven't used fresh basil yet. I'm going to put, put that on top because as far as I'm concerned, soft herbs, I wouldn't cook with them. No, no. no. Finish. Finish. Yes, correct. Yeah. Totally. Yep, yep, exactly. I'll okay. just pop this one on this tray as well. Thank you kindly. I'm going to go wash my hands and we'll be right back.
There's been enough time now where you should be able to take your puff pastry out of the fridge. So yep. Cass, do you want to go and grab ours? I shall do that. And I'd love to know what you've popped on your pizza scrolls, but more importantly, because we are steam oven enthusiasts, now might be a good time for you to tell us what you're doing with your steam oven at home. Are you already making pizza scrolls? Are you a pizza scroll pro and just thinking, come on, Alice, you forgot the uh step. If you've got a pizza scroll step that you want to share, a tip, please do. Thank you kindly. You're very welcome. Now, this is nice and set. You can tell um, when it's chilled, it's just easier to roll. And particularly if you are doing this with kids, you want them to have a good time and you don't want it to get too sloppy. Mind you, mess in the kitchen is... Is always fun. Always fun. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Now, have you got little people that you cook with, Cass? Yes, all the time. Yeah. What are some favourite things that you cook with them? Um, they love the pizza scrolls. Um, we also do a lot of chicken dishes as well mm. um, in the oven using the combi steam function, mm -hmm. um, which I find is really, really beautiful for the, um, you know, crispy chicken tenders. Um, yeah, just lots of different things. Uh, speaking of different things, if you're wondering what the different technique that Cass and I are using is, we're kind of pulling the paper at the same time as pushing mm. the pastry because you want this to be quite tight as a roll. Yes. So here we go. And I went a little bit overboard and overfilled mine because that's what I like to do. You know, generous, <laughs> you're a generous <laughs> overfiller. And if you've done that at home, that's totally fine. Yep. Um, just embrace the mess. Uh, or if you feel like, you know, it's at a point where it's an overflowing burrito, then you can <laughs> always unroll it. And I've actually overfilled mine too. Yes. So <laughs> Overfilled pizza scrolls is actually the recipe. Uh, we'll amend it before yeah. you even see it. <laughs> we'll fix it up in post. Okay, here we go. Excellent. So, and then we go, you want the seam on the bottom. Yes, and then just with your fingers, just pinch it together. See how I'm doing it differently to you? Oh, I know. So, you know what I'm doing? I'm using gravity to press my seam in, whereas Cass is using logic. <laughs> <laughs> let's see who's got the better result. Okay, so let's let's turn this back over. Here we go. Beautiful. Okay. Terrific. I'll grab our little egg wash. Ha 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 ha. Do you want to see who's got the better result? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> ba -ba. Listen to Cass, not Alice. Okay, so. Okay. Now, as I'm trying to fix my overfilled burrito vibe, Cass, you mentioned. Chicken dishes yes. in the combi steam. Yes. So how does that uh, improve the texture and flavour? Uh, so basically when you're using combi steam um, to do any type of chicken dish that's crumbed, uh, you've got the really nice crispy um, outside of your panko crumbs or whatever you've crumbed your chicken in yes. and beautiful and tender inside. So the steaming is leaving your chicken nice and tender in the middle. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Something else actually that I... Um, know from my time, if I wanted to hack a steam effect, I would steam my roast chicken mm -hmm. first to kind of help the skin to stick and then you crank the heat. Correct. But in yes. a steam oven, you don't need to fake it. It's just there. No, correct. But you still can also do that exact same thing. So you can you can start it off with steam mm -hmm. and then you can also introduce another another hot air oven function as well to crisp up your chicken and obviously cook it, you know, internally as well. Great. Mm. Okay, so everyone at home, if you've got a combi steam oven, which you do, um, what are the exact instructions? I'll stop this so that you can write them down. Yep. Roast chicken. Roast chicken. So what I would do with my roast chicken is I would steam it for probably about oh, 15 minutes yep. using 100 degrees of steam. Then I would turn my oven up to about 200 and cook it using, uh, I would still use combi steam one as well. Again, using that combi steam one, we're going to get that beautiful crispiness on the outside. Using combi steam one gives us 25% of steam. So the way I like to explain it is, we have three different levels. So we have combi steam one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. The less steam, the more crispy. The more steam, the less crispy. So when we talk about one, two, and three, number two, number two gives us 50% of steam, which is perfect for your pasta bakes, lasagnas, keeping it nice Yum. and moist mm -hmm. and not letting it dry out. Delish. So number one is like um, the crispiest yes and number three is for soft low and slow yes yes so okay. br beef brisket lamb shanks 
and you don't need to cover them cover them um because you want to let the steam penetrate uh -huh. the um the protein you speak in my language okay mm, let's, let's get some baking trays yes uh, you should have some lined baking trays your oven should be up to temp yes and we are going to cut these into six evenly sized pizza scrolls Make sure that you've brushed it with egg wash. We've got a little bit of milk in there as well. So an egg beaten in with a, a splash of milk. Uh, again, if you're doing this plant-based, you can use a bit of olive oil uh, or just straight up water. I, it just kind of gives it a nice gloss on top. I'll grab you a knife. Thank you. Well. Oh, well, no. <laughs> What's not what enough? you prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is, I like to use this because I find the weight uh, is pretty foolproof, but you don't need a giant cleaver, trust me, <laughs> especially if you want, want to protect your toes. Okay, so you take off the edges. I took off my little end bit. Yep. There you go. Slide that out of your way. So, and don't throw these out. Bake them, but they just won't be pizza scrolls. They'll be like little mini chef snacks for later. And you go straight in the middle. There you go. And are they all going to fit onto the one tray, do you reckon? I think yeah, they will. I think they will. Yeah. So one cut through the middle and then we go two, three, three. Okay, here's the moment of truth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get these onto the tray. Oh, yeah, let me just... And again, the best part about this sort of dish is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's about the flavour. It's about letting the professionals do the work and um, I think they're just going to be tasty. Ooh, that's going to look interesting. I know. <laughs> so I also, oh, that was a good sound. <laughs> cool. It was, it was. So I've also got a pastry scraper, which I think as far as gadgets, pastry scrapers are really handy in the kitchen, even for moving stuff from a chopping board to your pot. Mm. So in this instance, though, I'm going to use them to scrape this off and onto the tray. Okay, so maybe we do one like this. What do you reckon? Yeah. So you just stand them proud. And then again, use the same. So use the, uh, the baking paper and you can pop one of yours mm -hmm. there. Yep. Are we going slow enough for you? Are we going too slow? Probably. <laughs> you're, you're already at the, at the baking phase. So if you are, then um, have you been cooking low and slow in your steam oven? Let us know what you've been cooking. We would love to hear from you. There you go. Okay. So thank you, Cass. Tell you what, it's always handy having a, a spare pair of hands yeah, in the kitchen. Exactly. There you go. They're going to be beautiful and rustic. Rustic. And that's that's the beauty of cooking as well. You yes. make it your own. Yeah. I remember on uh, the little cooking show you mm. might have heard of, uh, one of the judges said to us, don't ever use the word rustic because we know it's an excuse <laughs> for something going wrong. <laughs> I love it though. I actually, so do I. I love kitchen flubs because I think they're important. So much of uh, cooking TV is too perfect and I think it, it intimidates people out of cooking at home. Correct. We're all on a spectrum of cooking. There you go. Cool. So yeah, gorgeous and full. Yeah. <laughs> gorgeous and full. Are yours gorgeous and full? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna show you them in just a sec. I wonder as well. I would brush the top of these with egg wash as well. Yes, just to make it a bit more browner Glossy, on top. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. I'll help you with that last Thank one. Thank you. Okay. The colours are really nice in yours, Cass. With the grilled veggies. Yes. That's another reason why I love cooking with veg because otherwise you just get brown on brown. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, we can pop our little chef snacks yep. off to the sides. Okay. Fabulous. And then let's brush mm -hmm. and then we're ready to pop into the oven. So. Just a little bit. How about you brush, Cass? I can brush. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I've done my brushing. Um, there we go. Now's a really good time, actually, if you are beyond the brushing phase, to clean down. So 
Get your knife out from under your baking tray. <laughs> <laughs> Clean down your bench. Here Pop that in go. the bin. Yeah, move your toe. And I might just grab a little bit more cheese yes. as well because we love cheese. What a great idea. And the egg will help it to stick on the top. Yep. So these are actually... Um, as rustic as they are, they're going to taste so good taste when they're done. That went in the bin. And uh, <laughs> cool. Now. So let's show. Dun, da, 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 da. Yeah. I'm all about this, this is, is so literally, rustic. particularly when you're cooking with kids, yeah. you want it to look like this because yeah. I feel like the kids will see that and go, oh, yeah, that's what mine looks like. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to go off into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Yes. So, so preheated 210. 210. Two, sorry, 220. Oh, yes. Preheated 220 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. And, I and have to I'll pop our timer on. Thank you. I'll, we'll check them after 15. Okay. See how they go then. Now, I have a surprise for you, Cass. Yes. You mentioned earlier that cooking vegetables in the steam oven brings them out, you know, nutritious, bright, vibrant colour, nice and set. So here's some I prepared earlier. We've got some asparagus and some baby broccoli or broccolini. Mm -hmm. um, and all that we've done is snap off the ends. So now is the time when asparagus is beautiful. Yes. Uh, and you do the, the bend and snap. Wherever it snaps is all the woody bit and that's uh, the bit that, that's fibrous. The rest of it is lovely and, in fact, you can eat asparagus raw, mm -hmm. which is yes. why you don't want to overcook it. You don't want it to be sad and limp. You want it to still have heaps of life to it. Correct. Yeah. Broccolini, again, only needs just the bottom off there and just a wash. And then we're going to dress this really simply, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to dress this with just some um, olive oil, mm -hmm. some salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and then we will um, pop these in the steam oven at 100 degrees of steam for roughly about five to seven minutes. Gorgeous. And you'll see how amazing they'll be. Yeah. So normally at home, I would blanch vegetables like this for, say, you know, asparagus two to three minutes, baby broccolini four to five, mm. and then I'd dress it with olive oil and salt. Yep. In doing this, you're kind of cutting out the middleman. Yep. Um, and may I ask, can we stack it at this level or do we want it all as one layer? We can, No, I think stacking at this level is okay. Cool. Um, we might just pop some of these broccolini off to the side as well, yep. just mm -hmm. so we've got a little bit more of a flatter surface. Okay. Um, but no, that looks beautiful. Excellent. And then a bit of salt flake action. You've yep. got a good tight shot for me to money shot this salt flake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then a cracker pep. Cracker pepper. Lovely. The other thing that I love to pop on my steamed or blanched veg mm. is garlic powder. Ooh. Yeah, and lemon, lemon juice. I was going to say lemon, yes. Yeah. Yep. But we can pop that on after. Yep, for yep. sure. Um, would you like some garlic powder? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you know, that's the sort of thing that I would toss together once it was cooked, but being able to just kind of one tray, I think one tray cooking is the future. So the, the less you need to do, the, the less you need to wash up, the better for me. There you go. Thank you kindly. So a little bit of garlic powder. I actually have garlic powder on the table as like a, a, a condiment or a seasoning. Really? Yes. And oh. our little girl got a two and a half year old and she knows she'll call for it if she feels like there's something missing. Like yeah. Je ne sais quoi. It's probably garlic powder. <laughs> she seasons herself. It's about teaching your kids to know their own palate. Yeah. That's amazing. That's that's fabulous. It's, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We, we're taking the hard, easy route. It means that, you know, lunchtime, dinner time's like an hour a pop, but it's worth it in the long exactly. run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do it. So we'll pop these in. Yes. So I've got my oven has already preheated to 100 degrees. Whew. We just open it slightly first just to let that first initial burst of steam. Otherwise, we get an amazing free facial, <laughs> which is always good. Bonus. And so popping it in. We'll go seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, we'll start with seven. Yep. Of course, the difference between blanching and steaming is that steaming is an indirect wet heat, so it does need a little bit longer than a direct wet yes. of blanch or yes. boiling. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's clean down and we'll see you back here in seven minutes for some vibrant, bright veg. Fabulous. <laughs>
That's been seven minutes now, Cass. Yes. I want to see some vibrant green vegetables. Pronto. Let's pull them out of the oven. I'm all about that steam. I feel like that's a real magic moment. <laughs> Don't you think? It is. <laughs> Especially with the ding, ding, ding. And we might just pop those on there. Lovely. They are just absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Fabulous. Yes. Tell you what, sometimes all you want is just some green stuff on the side of your plate, if not on the plate. Exactly. So we'll show we'll show our people at home so you can see how gorgeous and green all the nutrients are still remaining in the vegetables. They're al dente. Mm. Absolutely amazing. Gorgeous. And then our beautiful asparagus as well. 
Cass is much more delicate than I am. I would just be lumping this onto the plate. <laughs> Lump it. Lump it. There we go. So um, in terms of the difference of cooking this, normally if you're blanching, it means that you're losing a lot of the nutrients to the water. Yep. With the steam, you've got a little bit of its own natural juices that have come out of the veg, but that can go, you know, as a dressing. If Correct. you mix that, squeeze a little bit of lemon, lemon. juice in there yep. and use that as the dressing. Beautiful. Talk about one tray. Yes. Okay, so, uh, so a little chopping board. Yep. Terrific. Uh, now, just a cheek. I can do that for you. Okay, just a cheek. Beautiful. tray. You've already got that olive oil that you're catching, all the flavour from the garlic and the salt and the pepper, emulsifying it in the tray. This is great. <laughs> and just pour that over the top. Lovely. You could dress it with a little bit of micro herbs as well. Why not? Put some here. It smells really fantastic. And particularly while asparagus is in season, now's the time to take advantage of it. Exactly. Beautiful. There we go. Dun, da, 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 da. Cooking with veg, steam is such a benefit because you have an indirect wet heat, which means you don't lose all the nutrients to the water if you're blanching or boiling, but Correct. you also lock in that vibrant green colour for things like asparagus and broccolini. What about fish? Fish is such a delicate and beautiful protein. When you're steaming it, you want to steam it just until the... Um, Fish starts to flake apart. Mm. And desserts. So many desserts benefit from a little bit of moisture, which is why normally we'd use a bain-marie or a water bath. With steam, mm. you get that same kind of moist effect. So what sort of desserts can you make with steam? Creme brulee, it's beautiful in there. Um, also steamed chocolate puddings, um, steamed Christmas cakes. I did Christmas cake last year. Mm. Um, yeah, just, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. It sounds like there are so many benefits to cooking with steam in making sure that your food stays lovely, juicy, moist and tender. And yep. there are so many ingredients that would benefit from that. Correct, yes. Thank you.
20 to 25 minutes is up. How are your pizza scrolls looking? Because ours are looking and smelling great and they're ready to come out of the oven. Yes, I will grab them. Let's do it. When you're garnishing, you'll note I've got some thyme and some basil in front of me, but whatever fresh herbs you have at home can go on here. Parsley, dill, chervil, tarragon, go crazy. Speaking Ooh, of crazy, yeah. they look great. You can see the pastry is, uh, I'm distracting myself with the aroma. <laughs> yeah. Do yours smell, smell as good amazing. as ours? They smell really good, but the colour, see the golden flake. And as you said before, the steam encourages the layers to pull apart. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So let's get these on the board. Yes. And I'm going to finish with a little bit of thyme. Pun always intended. <laughs> get your kids to do these sorts of jobs because fresh herbs don't even need to chop them. Just a bit of tearing will do it. <gasps> They look sensational. They look great. They look beautiful. And you can take them from a lunchbox treat to a dinner time sitcho with just a fresh leafy salad or some freshly steamed greens. And, and I'll leave our little chef's ones for later. Lovely. And some baz. And we are done. I hope yours look as good as these. Can't wait to beautiful. tuck in. They look fantastic. If you've got any more questions, pop them in the chat. And uh, we are going to tuck in, shall we? Yes, let's do it. Done. Wonderful. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. I got your prosciutto one. I got your vegetable mm. one. Beautiful. Moist, tender, flaky, crispy, cheesy, gooey, yum. Thank you. A job well done. Cheers. Excellent. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to you. And we'll see you for the next cook along very Cheers. soon. Cheerio. Mmm, <laughs> they're good. Yum! Mmm! <laughs> <laughs>